Thank you, Bill. And uh, um, be before we jump into questions, I just want I wanted to start here uh, and just acknowledge it, it, it. It's been a long week. Um, we did have a student athlete meeting yesterday and really the messaging to our student athletes is what I really want Cougs all over the state, country and world to really, really hear is um, Washington State's gonna be okay. It's gonna be different, uh, but we're gonna be okay. Uh, specific to our student athletes, I, I, I reassured them their, their experience this year and 23, 24 is gonna be similar to the experiences they've had as student athletes here in the past. And um, our goal as President Schultz, myself, our board is to uh, make sure that we put them in a position where um, their experience remains similar going forward. So um, this environment is uncertain. Um, don't have many answers right now where we sit um, on what this looks like after this year. But uh, for all of us, we're just we're going to control the controllables. We're going to keep moving forward as athletic department. Um, and the reality is we're it, it is our belief the best days of Washington State are still directly in front of us. So um, I'll pause there, Bill. If you want to begin the Q&A, we can. All right. We'll take questions from those online. Uh, if you do have a question, please raise your hand and we'll bring you in. We'll just go one question at a time per reporter, and we will start with uh, Jamie Vinnick. Go ahead, Jamie. Pat, just uh, first off, thanks for taking time to do this. Thank uh, you. I, I think one of the big pressing questions is, uh, will you look to still play the Apple Cup beyond this season, or is that over? Uh, I think it's a layered decision. Um, one, the practicality of it is uh, football scheduling is complicated um, and and beyond this year that is a huge question mark for us uh two the reality is is this environment is very clear right now there are um um the apple cup is a national game it is a national rivalry uh it's a valued game from a tv property standpoint so wherever we end up it's not going to be an emotionally based decision it's going to be based on what's best for washington state uh, what's best for our student athletes. So uh, that that is uh, right now um, where that is in the decision tree is pretty is a little bit further down because we're more focused on uh, securing the best future for Washington State and we'll make those decisions in the appropriate time, but they will not be based on emotion. Next question, Tim Booth of the AP. Go ahead, Tim. Go ahead, Tim. Pat, you there? Yes. Sorry about that. Um, as you're going through this process, what are your priorities as you're speaking with other schools, other conferences, and, and trying to find a, a home? Uh, it's re it's really, I mean, you you look at where Washington State has been. Um, you know, our TV ratings are, if you were to look at the three conferences between what, you know, formerly the Pac-12 or what it was, the ACC, uh, and the Big 12, we'd be, depending on the metrics, the top third or top half of the TV ratings. Um, our football program has been the second to seven consecutive bowl games. Our women's basketball program just won the Pac-12 championship. Our men's basketball program um, just has gone to back-to-back postseason. So uh, I recognize the caliber of student athlete that we've continued to attract to Washington State. It's indicative in how they perform academically, how they perform athletically, and the goals going forward is to ensure that we put them in positions to compete at the highest levels. Complicated based on decisions made by others, uh, but we're going to continue to find the best home uh, for our young people to be able to, for them to be able to pursue their athletic and athletic goals. Next question, Greg Woods of the Spokesman. Go ahead, Greg. Hey, Pat. Um, over the last year or two, do you guys at any point receive an invite to another Power Five conference? I, I mean, it, it's not that simple of a question. We've been we've been uh, committed members of the Pac-12 conference, uh, you know, for in whatever iteration it was for over the past century. So um, the world changed last Friday, and now we're 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 trying to figure out what the best future for Washington State is. Next question, Julian Minnison. Julian, go ahead. Thanks for taking the time, Pat. Um, what is the overall impact of of all of this look like for the uh, the not just the athletic department when it comes to the other sports, but jobs and and everything that kind of falls under under there in the athletic department with all this movement going on here? 
Well, it's, it's some is a little bit to be determined. Like I said, we, you know, we recognize we're going to be okay. It, it will be different just simply because um, uh, sports on the West Coast changed, um, at least in the interim, uh, because the one constant is changing college athletics and the reality is realignment is not done. Uh, and so, as I think President Schultz has been very clear, uh, we're committed. Uh, we are a Power 5 school. Uh, our performance uh, in, indicates that we are a Power 5 school. We're going to do our best to continue to compete at that level. Um, and that's, that's really our goals going forward. So, um, you know, what are the long-term implications, short-term implications? I don't have that answer because we have to figure out what our home looks like uh, beyond this year. Uh, but our goals have not changed at Washington State. Um, you know, econ economics have never impacted our ability to perform at Washington State. Uh, I think one of our staff members uh, uh, very acutely pointed out to me that nothing has changed for Washington State. We continue to battle against schools that have higher resources than us. We continue to battle against uh, what people determine we should be based on the size of a TV market. Uh, and that has not changed for Washington State. And we'll continue to battle forward and uh, put Washington State in the best position possible. Next question, Gianna Cephalou. Go ahead, Gianna. Hi, Pat. So you talked about in the student opener or in the opener student athlete messaging. What was their what were their primary concerns? What were their reactions to all this conference realignment going on? Uh, well, we'll have continuing conversations with them. I believe you know, we'll, we've uh, the president has asked us to convene a student athlete group. Uh, which I believe they'll they'll meet in short order, maybe even as early as tonight to get feedback. Um, you know, the questions we took or feedback we took were more about, you know, postseason travel. Uh, I think just, you know, you know, we made it clear uh, there weren't a lot of answers today, but but what we could answer, you know, we'd be willing to uh, to to speak about. But you know, there were the normal concerns of you know 18 to 22 year olds that are really trying to figure out um, what the world looks on beyond this year. And that really was kind of the, the, the theme is, hey, we're, you know, this thing is still the Pac-12 as we know it for 23, 24. Uh, if you look at the performance our athletic department, you know, last year, even the most recent years, you know, the comprehensive excellence that's gone across the board will continue this year. And our teams are positioned uh, in all sports to compete, uh, you know, in, in pack for Pac-12 championships. So it's really just reminding everyone let's focus on the control, let's control the controllables, and let's continue to go down this path together. Uh, next question, Taryn Kowatch. Taryn, go ahead. Uh, hi, Pat. Yeah, I was, um, the Pac-12 is known for its, you know, academic standard and the university, or uh, Washington State University is as well. So uh, I'm wondering how the balance has been between, you know, trying to keep that in mind while trying to find a suitable home for Washington State. Well, the the the, why well, I guess this, the Pac-12 you speak of is a, a older version of the Pac-12 that no longer existed, and we learned that in real time based on what happened last week. So you know, there's a bunch of you know in, in 2023. There are different um, criteria in what a meaningful conference needs to look like for Washington State, what conferences as a whole look like. Um, I've been very clear our, our you know we we are um, we are being ripped apart in college football specifically due to economic forces, due to market forces. and uh, until there's better leadership as a whole, this is going to continue. What happened to, uh, the four schools that remain in the Pac-12 is going to be a theme that you see over the course of the next um, the, the next decade, uh, unless we get better leadership in college football. Okay, next question, Chris Daniels. Chris, go ahead. Yeah, Pat, just following up on one of those uh, previous questions, just to drill down a little bit more, um, you know that the president has spoken with ESPN in a story that was published today talking about uh, the, the loss in revenue potentially at 40% and, and mentioning the word layoffs. Is there anything given what is known and what is unknown that you do right away in terms of budgeting or scheduling, given that, uh, you know, the next football season is a year away? Yeah. I mean, the problem is the, 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 the those are the two uh, I, priority issues are trying to um understand what a budget should and could look like and then scheduling is is probably the next piece after that 
And that's why the first order of the business is really figuring out what a home for Washington State football looks like beyond this year. So the, 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 everything else is a question mark until we get number one solidified. And that's what President Schultz and myself have been uh, working on since, you know, I mean, you know, we understood, you know, we, we you know, when you're going through the, the, the possibility of outcomes of, of where we're at as a Pac-12, this was always going to be a possibility. Um, I think it's been very clear and been widely reported that on, on multiple occasions that um, there was belief that, you know, the, the nine or the nine existing schools or nine remaining schools were going to agree upon uh, media rights. And obviously it didn't happen. And, you know, we're, we're going through, you know, um, trying, we're going through an effort here to ensure that we end up in the best place possible for Washington State and we'll make some, then we'll make decisions based on where we end up. Next question is coming from Travis Green. Travis, go ahead. Hey, Pat. Um, a lot of, there's been a lot of backlash for these teams leaving these power conferences to another power conference and it being focused solely on football and not thinking about how it affects the other athletes the student athletes in the other sports. I know you see uh, WSU as a Power Five conference co school. Um, well, how much will that factor into the decision that you guys make going forward, thinking about the other sports? Well, well, I wouldn't call we don't call them other sports at Washington State. I mean, we all of our sports are equally important to us. We recognize, um, you know, football does command the most eyeballs. Uh, that's why we are. That's why we we that's why we, we we're taking feedback from our student athletes. Uh, that's why we're convening them. Uh, our faculty athletic rep, Nancy Swanner, is actually leading this exercise. Um, you know, there's some realities that will come into play. We want to make sure when, whenever we get to a place of uh, where we're at from a decision place that we factor in uh, our student athletes perspectives as best as possible. Um, you know, the, the reasons and rationales on why other schools make those decisions, uh, you know, I'm not going to jump into, but uh, you know, we're, we're going to do our due diligence to ensure that we end up in the best place. And the reality is, you know, where we sit today is, is, is that is an unknown, but there is a place for Washington State and we will get there. Alex Crescenti, go ahead. Hey, Pat, um, I know you've probably got a lot of lawyers looking through all of this, but is there anything in terms of antitrust that you could potentially be looking at in when it comes to TV networks, uh, potentially locking out uh, Washington State and Oregon State uh, from the big table there um, and making sure that they don't have a seat? Um, I know there's a lot of TV money that runs through that, but are you looking at anything in terms of antitrust? Uh, I know the, the, the existing board of the Pac-12, which is the, the remaining four presidents are having uh, you know, dialogue about what options are going forward. So where that is, I mean, that, that's a Kirk Schultz question, and he's the only one that can answer that. As a reminder, if you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll call on you. Uh, back to Jamie Vinnick. Go ahead, Jamie. Pat, uh, President Schultz in his ESPN.com interview today mentioned three contingencies, uh, the Mountain West, re or reconstituted Pac-12, and the American Athletic Conference. Are there uh, any other contingencies that you're working on? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's, 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 uh, uh, I think everything's a contingency is a reality, but we're, we are, I think the term he used or the term we're using is we're trying to keep as many irons in the fire as possible. And, um, you know, we're having dialogue with a lot of people in real time. And like I said, we're, we're, and there's still movement and there's going to be movement. And uh, I remind everyone, this is, this, the realignment is far from over. It may pause uh, maybe for a season, but uh, as Steve, as 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 things settle, as new memberships have to adapt or not adapt to where they're at, as TV keeps, um, you know, driving uh, becomes continues to be a driving force in decision making in these conferences, uh, their realignment is going to continue to happen. Greg Woods with the spokesman. Go ahead, Greg. Hey, Pat, what's your understanding of how um, the uh, distribution of Pac-12 funds with the remaining four schools will go and what could WSU be in line for in terms of that? Uh, really, no, no, no clarity on that at this moment. And and like I said, that I know the Pac-12 board is, um, you know, in the process of trying to um, map out whatever options are on the go forward. But I, I would have no clarity on that. Julian Minnison, go ahead, Julian. Hey, Pat, just to follow up on one of the earlier questions about the Apple Cup, um, would you agree to the game if it wasn't to be played in Pullman regularly? Like I said, I'm not. We're not making any decisions about the Apple Cup. Um, like, we're, we're, I'm not doing any uh, um, 
you know, hypothesis uh, about what could be. Whenever that point comes at the time, we'll make decisions based on what's best for Washington State, plain and simple. And I don't see it. I don't see. I don't see not playing the Apple Cup and Pullman not being the best. Like I don't see how that it would ever be a good decision for Washington State. Chris Daniels, go ahead. Yeah, Pat, in the, the announcement that was made by the University of Washington over the weekend, uh, the, the president and the athletic director uh, both addressed the relationship with Washington State and, and Jen Cohen in particular mentioned you and, and how good of a friend you have been over the years. Uh, can, you, can you explain what the conversation was like when uh, the, the University of Washington uh, told you that they were making the decision that they made? Brief. Like your answer. Yes, like my answer. Uh, I mean, but anything you can say about the, the conversation that you had with Jen, because uh, based on her answer to uh, th this whole decision, it, it sounded like uh, there were a lot of mixed emotions there based on the relationship that she has with you. Yeah, which which is not unexpected. But I mean, it's, it's you know, we're at, we're at, you know, the, the a decision made by a school that um, that you've partnered with on many levels throughout the state. Uh, as we know, higher education is a priority, has been a priority for the state of Washington. The two universities, um, at least in my time here, have worked in tandem on so many things to improve the state of Washington. And the reality is, is the decision by one school within our state negatively impacts the, the, a school in the other part of the state. And that's just the reality of, of, uh, of what happened last Friday. And, you know, my job isn't to sit here and dwell on, um, you know, what just happened. My job is to ensure that we have the best path going forward and now I'm going to continue to, uh, to try to, you know, do everything I can to get us there. Kim Booth, go ahead. Pat, as, as one of the four remaining members, you currently still are a, a auto bid conference to the college football playoff. As you're having these conversations with uh, various other leagues and and schools how much is figuring out a way to retain that part of, of those discussions i think it's what we said earlier we're just trying to keep all options on the table and viable and we will we'll continue and whichever option generates the most momentum is we'll we'll, we'll 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 continue to push but all options are on the table karen kowatch go ahead hi pat um you know, over the past couple of weeks, there's been a lot of reports coming out over the series of events that led to everything happening. I just wanted to get your perspective of, you know, what the conversations were like leading up to the decisions and uh, from your perspective, what do you think was, you know, the main thing that led to everything happening over the past couple of weeks? Well, I think it's been well documented that the, the last couple of weeks was a culmination of years of failed leadership, failed vision, um, failed implementation. Um, it, it, it isn't one singular thing that led to the destruction of the Pac-12 as we know it. It was it was a bunch of decisions and a um, you know failed strategies that put us in this place. And it's unfortunate because the ones who lose out on that are um, you know the the student athletes on the go four that I mean you could you know I could pull. You know, I could I could pull Jack Thompson in here all from the days of Jack Thompson through Clay Thompson through uh, Gardner Minshew and Morgan Weaver, and they're all going to talk about the experiences of playing in the Pac-12 and uh, the opponents and the memories. and uh, And we're not the only school. It's it's there's a, a century of history that has gone by the wayside because um, you know this conference has mismanaged itself uh, on a bunch of different levels. And when you have poor leadership, uh, it, one of the outcomes is failure, and um, and and that's what has happened to the Pac-12. All right, Jamie, go ahead. Pat, just to kind of follow up on uh, my previous question, um, President Schultz said the Mountain West might be the outcome, and whether it's that or something else. Um, and with that, uh, President Schultz mentioned a potentially large revenue hit. What's your concern level on uh, one, the transfer portal, and two, losing coaches? I'm not going to speculate on where we end up. Like I said, all options are on the table right now. Whenever we get to that point, we'll get to that point. Um, you know, whether we're in the Pac-12, Southeastern Conference, Big Ten, or you name the league, uh, the transfer portal is a challenge. Uh, so that challenge has not gone away. 
uh, for any school, and that has not changed at all for college athletics and college uh, college college football specifically. So uh, wherever we, we you know where we end up, we'll start making decisions, and I'll have more concrete answers at that point. But everything is speculatory at this point, and there, there's no point in me living in the speculatory world. All right, Kyle Bonagara, ESPN. Go ahead, Kyle. Yeah, Pat, you mentioned the just now the poor leadership in the conference. You know, was that understood throughout the conference that it was bad leadership as it was happening? Or did it take you guys some time to look back and realize how bad everything was? And if you did understand it at the time, like what forces allowed the, the leadership to stay in place for as long as it did? Well, I think there's a great leadership book that's to be written someday when you when you look into what happened in the Pac-12. And I think it's been well documented with, you know, from the, from the start of the Pac-12 network and how it was launched and decisions that it created on all campuses, including ours, and, um, you know, where that led to where we're at today. So like I said, it's it's not, you know, when things like this happen, it, it rarely is it one singular thing that becomes a tipping point. It's a buildup that, that got to this place that, you know, at the end of the day, um, there was always a belief that everybody also understood the responsibility that the membership had towards sports on the West Coast specifically, but market forces are pulling college athletics apart and and we're no different than what's going on around the rest of the country. So, um, you know, obviously it's it's pretty clear the way, you, you know, um, at least college athletics conferences are structured. Uh, presidents hire the commissioner. Presidents hold that commissioner accountable. And um, at the end of the day, we're at, we're at um, because of poor leadership. But that's, that's, that, that's a lot of people involved in that equation. Okay, uh, next question, Taryn Co Kowatch. Go ahead, Taryn. Yeah, Pat, you mentioned the uh, the ongoing communication between you and the remaining uh, three schools in the Pac-12. Um, earlier this week, there were reports about uh, ACC and then Stanford and Cal potentially being uh, interested in joining. So I was wondering uh, what those conversations are like. Are they, you know, input between all the four schools on what the next decision might be for all four viewers, or is it just, um, does it lean more towards transparency of just explaining that this is what we're doing right now? Uh, you have four colleagues that understand uh, what the environment is currently at and are working to ensure that their institutions are positioned best in this environment. I have time for just a few more. If you have a question, please raise your hand. Greg Woods, go ahead. Hey, Pat, in uh, President Schultz, Schultz's uh, interview with ESPN, he said that you guys are facing a uh, uh, budget crunch that would represent, you know, 40 percent of the school's um, athletic, rev athletic revenue disappearing. I'm wondering um, in what ways would that impact the school and uh, kind of practically what would that look like? Well, I have not modeled. I mean, the reality is 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 where we're at from a. Um, from a conference distribution standpoint will change. And we have not modeled those out only because the task at hand is to find a, a future home for us. But, um, you know, like I said, I'm not gonna speculate, but it's gonna have impact. I mean, I, you don't have to be a finance expert to know that, uh, but we'll start modeling out what, what, what this needs to look like, but it's hard to do when we really don't understand, we have full, uh, full view of what our revenues could be um, or will be at um, on the go forward after this year. Any final questions? If so, please raise your hand. Jamie Vinnick, go ahead. Pat, just kind of uh, curious what the mood around the athletic department is uh, like right now. Um, I, I think it, it, you, we're, you were going through the whole, um, I would call stages of grief. I mean, this is, this is a, an, an institution, an athletic program that is extraordinarily proud of what it's been able to achieve over the last century. Uh, it's really remarkable when you think about um, who Washington State is, the the external world's perception that the odds are stacked against it, and yet over and over it continues to prove its critics critics wrong. So it's it's really an anomaly when you think about um, what Washington State has become. Um, I mean, it's celebrated on ESPN Game Day every Saturday with its own segment. Uh, to the performance of our football team, our basketball programs, our volleyball team, our soccer teams, 
Um, our baseball team was what the 13th winningest baseball program in you know in college baseball. Um, the, the the glorious history with Henry Rono and all the track and field excellence we've had in the past. So it, it's it's a place with an enormous amount of pride, uh, and you don't and, and we're one of those schools that um, that that loves Washington State and the students love the experience here and the staff are are fiercely loyal to the mission and the purpose of what this place stands for. So um, it's been tough, um, but the reality is Cougs are tough and we'll come out swinging when it's all said and done. This thing is far from over. That's why I keep telling our staff, realignment's gonna continue to happen and we're gonna continue to prove our critics wrong. We're gonna continue to go forward uh, and Washington State, uh, Washington State will continue to be a national brand because unlike most of the schools in and around the country, we've actually earned it uh, through the work of all of our student athletes and all of our alums around the world.